concept here is to make a play set more fun and more educational. And also, like, Miles, if you want to come around, too, it would be great. Sure. So we can kind of both go through this. So the, the concept here is to have a play set that consists of multiple pieces. These represent floors of different rooms in your house. So this one is, for example, the living room floor. Maybe this is the bathroom, and you could envision a kitchen, yeah. a backyard, rec room. Rec room. And then here we have the individual play pieces. So you see different characters and the different household objects. And today, kids already play like this with the toys, so they kind of make up stories and move things around. But now what we've done is we've added AR. So your physical toys, now when a tablet's introduced, can actually come alive and talk to you. So I don't know if you can hear that, but Ernie is now greeting us and asking us if we can put one of his Sesame Street friends inside the, the game with him. So if I put this down, the Miles will put Bert down right there too. Let's try and make them like look at each other a little bit. When we come back up, you'll see Ernie actually recognizes that Bert showed up in the scene and now they start talking to each other. So you can, you can imagine now all the possibilities here, because a kid can take any of these different objects and put them down, and then get a totally different experience, and actually have the toys respond and interact. And, and one of the great things about working with Sesame is because they're so focused on research and the educational value, they really see the potential for, for educational use. Miles, maybe you can talk the to The characters can, can give the, the child educational tasks to do, for example, can you put something in the room that starts with the letter C? Or can you help me find my rubber ducky? It's, I think it's inside of something that holds water. And whole storylines can be developed just based on what choices the child makes playing with the toys. And so it's just another way for us to engage children and, and hopefully educate them at the same time. What, what kind of response have they got from children? Oh, it's been fabulous. We've been doing... How, how do they react? Uh, when they see that the toys come along. They love it. I mean, it's just magical to them. And it's also incredibly intuitive for them. We've done uh, multiple rounds of, of testing with children, which is how, how we approach our work. Starting from concept testing, and then as we've had the builds along the way, we put it in front of kids. And uh, each time, they've just immediately gotten it, and, and you know, we had to basically drag them away. They were, they were so excited about it. What, what is uh, what are the limits with this uh, technique uh, today? Well, one of the interesting challenges that we had to confront was that with young children, we didn't want them to have to put down the tablet, and they really need both hands to hold it. And so we came up with ways for them to interact that just involve moving the tablet in or out or around. So, for example, if if the child wants to direct the story's attention towards a particular character, they can just zoom the tablet in on that character. That way they never have to put it down. And so we, we tried to program uh, all of the interactions based on the choices that they make with the objects in the rooms and the, and the movement of the, the viewing device, which was a really interesting design challenge and I think it actually has led us to coming, coming up with a whole new interface, a new way to interact. Oh, absolutely. I think it's a, it's truly a new form of play. Yes. I mean, it's a new it's a new play paradigm. It's a new kind of toy, and I think one that really really expands the possibilities. And, and the fact that it makes it more educational, with a kid just sitting there alone with a oh, toy yeah. now, is, is huge. Absolutely, because you know our characters. You know, kids see these characters as their friends, and they're able to actually detect exactly what the child is doing and give help and give encouragement, reward when they get something right. Now, the, the thing about the technology, too, that's really a technology first, is, as Paul mentioned at the end of the keynote, there's a lot of AR starting to 
see all over the place. And much of the AR that works today is just recognizing a simple 2D image. And what's happening, and just one image at a time. And what's happening here is we're actually recognizing an image in this case, which is the floor, and we're recognizing those 3D objects all simultaneously. And one of the things about computer vision is it's extremely computationally intensive. So this is one of the things that we're able to achieve by virtue of the advanced computer vision technology that we've developed. And number two, just the benefits of Snapdragon. And I think this is impressive, that you can actually pick up the piece and move it closer without ever losing the lock. This is, this is what I like to show too, Miles, is when I go back and forth, if I just look at these guys and I move the device, well, after they stop talking, their heads will follow the device as I move it from side to side. So they can, you can actually see that they're responding to us away from the fence here. You see Bert's head turn? Yeah. When I come over here. This is amazing. Thank you. It's, um, Awesome. So many wonderful stories that can be told this way. With you know, children putting toys in and taking them out and, and triggering whole new storylines.